NVIDIA has just leveled up their reputation of releasing incredible experimental models that try to do things a little bit differently. Sure, they're the king of hardware and AI, but they're quickly becoming a leader in both improving existing workflows and models and also trying things that are entirely new and different, even if they don't have a clear use case. So today, NVIDIA released something really interesting, which they're calling Himba, or a hybrid head architecture for small language models. And in the past, we would see small language models being created for the purpose of running on edge devices like iPhones or NPUs. And what's really exciting about our current reality is that small models now mean if you're looking at the future facing direction of AI, it's impossible to not trip over or even fall over a pile of ideas that are all wrapped around agents. So what is Himba? What is it good for today? What can you even do with it today? And what does it mean for the future of large language models that are a little bit smaller meant for agents? that happened to come from NVIDIA. Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So there are a few really great breakdowns of this on X and I'm gonna go over a few of those today. So GM8XX8 is one of my favorite developers to follow, I'll link him below. And this is his brief synopsis of Himba. So Himba is a SLM family that combines Transformers attention for detailed recall with state space models for efficient context handling. And within agents, context handling is one of the hardest tasks because you're, you're passing a lot of messages between models and a lot can be lost in that kind of conversation between all of these small models. Key highlights include learnable meta tokens, which I'll explain in just a bit, cross layer key value sharing and sliding window attention which optimize performance and reduce memory usage. And a big aim with these small models meant for agentic flows is how many of them you can cram into a single GPU. The game used to be how much of a model could you pare down to run a single instance on a GPU, and now it's how many of these small models you can cram into a GPU. So this model is curiously, so Himba is interesting because it's 1.5 billion parameter base model outperforms all sub two billion models and even surpasses Llama 3 to 3 billion in a few areas, including cache efficiency and throughput. And inference scaling is another thing that NVIDIA touches on a little bit, but I think we'll see more insight into in just a bit. So we'll jump into the Hugging Face page where NVIDIA breaks down a lot of the core concepts of their architecture. But Philip Schmid, I think, had probably the most concise breakdown of this without getting too technical. So thank you, Philip. I'll link him below in the description as well. So this new small hybrid model from NVIDIA has been announced. It's really exciting. Himba is a 1.5 billion parameter hybrid Mamba X attention model. So what's curious is they were really careful to not mention Mamba initially, at least in NVIDIA's official release, that outperforms other small LLMs like Meta's 3.2 or small LM v2, being trained on only 1.5 trillion tokens. And the amount of time it took to do that for a small model, I think you'll be surprised by. It uses a new hybrid architecture with Mamba and attention heads, running in parallel with additional Meta tokens or learnable tokens prepended to every prompt. So this is kind of a way to append context that isn't necessarily just text to a text prompt to make the output better to improve the efficiency of the model. It shares KV caches between two layers and between heads in a single layer. It has 16 SSM states, three full attention layers, and the rest are sliding window attention, which is really interesting because sliding window attention is not really a new thing, but this is a really new way of actually using it. And the other crazy thing about this is it's actually using flex attention, which is really cool. It's just not something you see a lot currently. And Unfortunately, we do not have the model weights yet. Those are probably coming within the next 24 to 48 hours. And I think it's pretty interesting. I do wanna look at benchmarks real quick, but the thing is, is for me at this point, looking at benchmarks on day one releases is generally not really worth it. You learn so much more waiting in just a few days now, and we should take all of these numbers with a bit of a grain of salt. So if, if we look at just raw throughput, this model is clearly edging out a lot of these other models. Another big one is the cache size. What's interesting is when you look at cache size relative to throughput, uh, usually this is highly correlated. And what's interesting with this model, Himba from NVIDIA, is that there's a huge digression from this. And the accuracy score is also quite interesting. One huge shortfall of the smaller quants of Llama 3.2 were the fact that they just weren't that accurate, even if they were fast to respond. And in my opinion, one of the most interesting inversions we're seeing right now, which are really exciting, is that small models are now able to be much more accurate while not just kind of picking whether you want accuracy or throughput. That used to be a really key trade-off and we're finding ways to strike an interesting balance that really makes these models useful. So what does NVIDIA actually have to say on their Hugging Face page where maybe we'll see weights soon? What they have to say here 
is they're really just pushing that meta tokens are a really big part of why this all works. And they mentioned some really interesting things about how this model isn't just a standard transformer model. And what's interesting is they are really careful to not really mention Mamba too much in this. I think they really want to make sure that this model is not just a branching off of Mamba to do something else, that they're actually taking bits of Mamba and using it in completely different ways. I mentioned training time. People might think that, oh, training a small model that's um, very performant takes less time. And people also sometimes get frustrated when model releases aren't consistent or scheduled out in the future. And one thing that's interesting is sometimes you, you don't really know how long a training run will take. Sometimes training runs fail, even when you run them in parallel or when you do multiples of them. So what's crazy is even this tiny uh, 1.5 billion parameter base model, not even the instruct model, was trained between September 1, 2024 and November 10th, 2024. So we're still looking at months of training even for tiny, tiny models like this, um, even small kind of experimental ones. So the model architecture is pretty interesting. And if you're familiar with Mamba, this isn't going to be massively surprising. So there are 25 attention heads. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's 16 SSMs. And the key difference between this and a standard transformer model is that unlike the standard transformer, each attention layer in Himba has a hybrid combination of standard attention heads and Mamba heads in parallel. Additionally, it also uses grouped query attention and rotary position embeddings which basically make passing context between layers a little bit easier. And a lot of the architectural importance of these diagrams, even if you can't quite follow these, is where meta tokens are placed and then how they affect the output projections in these transformers. So they introduce this notion of meta tokens, which are propended to input sequences and interact with all subsequent tokens. So not just ones that are met with the prompt. The whole idea here is kind of highlighted in blue, which is the idea that you can store important information alleviating the burden of force to attend in attention or having to like blatantly highlight huge portions or repeat portions of a prompt to make sure the model remembers. Um, if you've used cursor, sometimes you'll notice that you have to continuously re like repeat the same context to make sure the model understands what it did in a previous step. This is a big problem in agentic flows and it's why people think agents will eventually be the only suitable way to code with AI because um, you won't have to continually tell it how much you want of its previous steps to remember to apply to your current prompt because uh, it's it's actually a lot of stuff you have to keep in your head while you're using it and it results in better UI flows and it also results in the LLM not having to think about things that don't really matter and potentially give you bad output by focusing on something that just wasn't relevant. This is another really important function here. Basically it shows that the Himba blocks are recursive in nature until they reach kind of a confidence interval. And you can see that you start with the embeddings and you end with output going to an LM head, which is pretty interesting. These are the benchmarks we looked at prior. You can see that the efficiency in terms of accuracy and throughput is really impressive relative to cache size, which I think is cool. Again, it means you can fit more of these onto a single GPU. And the setup for these is a little bit different. So looking um, at when these will be available, um, even if the weights aren't public um, to actually try out, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how long this takes, especially since this is using a new uh, lesser used attention framework. And it'll be really interesting to see. So I'm eager to see when we'll actually get these uh, weights. I think the instruct version will probably be more useful. Um, so I'm really eager to try out the Himba 15B instruct variant and I think this is a really cool, again, step forward from NVIDIA showing that they do a lot of um, experimental work, but with a keen focus on uh, actually having applications or kind of a use case for these ready to go. You know, there are a lot of really cool labs out of China and labs out of academia. And what's interesting is, you know, this work is still really impressive. It's just usually um, at a lower level that's like just below understanding what you could actually use it for or is hyper, hyper focused um, with a very limited scope of what you can use it for. So I'm curious, um, do you think this model is going to make agentic flows better? What kind of agentic flows are you guys using right now? Please let me know in the comments below. So as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.